Okay. We're happy to have uh, Joel Merker uh, giving his second talk in his series on symmetry with uh, power series. Okay, so thank you for listening to me. <laughs> so it will be like a bit like informal again because uh, I somehow want to present too much things and I know it's impossible to, to give all ideas in one hour. So I, I'm trying to say one, one thing I have in, in my head since uh, I collaborated with Pavel Nowowski. So I show you an example of a branching tree. So this is uh, coming from our joint article on parasier structures, which are levy degenerate in dimension five, and which are uh, closely related to the, the works of Igor and David Sykes. So by this, I mean that in principle, so in every like in equivalence problem, you should have some invariant which creates a branching, whether it vanishes identically or not, or, or not. So after proper restriction to a subset. So I want to say that in some problems, we are lacking such a branching tree and I'm trying to like uh, explore it. I give an example. So something which was uh, much worked uh, by other researchers, especially Dubrov, Medvedev and, and T. Uh, it's second order PDs. Uh, uh, for function z of two variables x and y, so p is the x, q is the y, dx and dy are the total differential differentiation operators, and we assume that they commute, so that there, are, there is a solution which depends on initial conditions, okay? So in the third jet space, which is five-dimensional, we have two distributions, which are vertical and horizontal, and they are linearly independent at every point, and their sum is four-dimensional. And we assume that it is, it is somehow degenerate in a sense, maximally degenerate, that it is contact. So there are many uh, terminologies for such objects, which, which uh, like uh, denote the same kind of mathematics, uh, mathematical structure, like e.g. Uh, uh, parasier structure of type T2 to one, two is the rank of H, two is the rank of V, and one is plus one, because C is of, uh, M is of rank one, is five. And also another terminology, integrable legend legendary contact structure. And what I do use, which is close to camera and Omid, uh, which is a manifold of solutions. Everybody knows that the flat model is uh, the PD system with zero right hand size. And the, the group is a projective group. So you, it's 15 dimensional because we have 16 constant, but only 15 are uh, essential parameters. So you have like uh, this matrix in SL4. And it's, it's very famous that uh, you have a gap phenomenon. So the possible least symmetry dimension drop from 15 to eight. 15 is, a, of course, the dimension of SL4. And there is a big paper by the, uh, Boris Kruglikov and Edith Zay about this general phenomenon in parabolic geometries. And what I would like to say is something like this phenomenon, this what they call gap phenomenon, is essentially universal. It does not like concern only parabolic geometries. And I observed it in other geometries also, and I somehow tried to explain it at the end of this lecture, why, why, why it is so, but it's like very basic, very elementary. It's something about like uh, uh, matrices which depend on, on constants. And when the constant, some constant is assumed to be non-zero, then it has an effect on the, on the other entries of the matrix, that's all. So this gap phenomenon is like spectacular for like uh, exceptional Lie groups because the drop is important, but we have less like spectacular phenomena in almost every other uh, geometric structure that can, you can explore with the equivalence method. Also for these second order PDEs, you have the submaximal model, which is like uh, related to the Winkelmann CR hypersurface. These are the symmetries. I do not see the structure. I do not show the structure. And there is an invariant differential quartic. And this is what I want to, to discuss today in the context of power series method of equivalence instead of Carton's method of equivalence. So I borrow this uh, from the paper of Dubrov, Medvedev, and T. And this is a quartic with RS in P1 of C, and the coefficients are partial derivatives of function f, g, h of the, of the second order system from the beginning, that's all. So I don't want to enter further uh, the, the theory. Of course, we have a simple characterization of flatness, which means, by this I mean that the 
Tartan connection as curvature zero. And uh, there are a discussion also in the big paper of Cartan about uh, this G2 structure of five, five distri uh, two distribution in five dimensional space. So you can classify uh, according to the root type. And it's very, very classical, in fact. It goes back to the 18th century, perhaps. And then uh, either the quartic is, is the quartic, sorry, is identically zero, or it has a single root of multiplicity four, two distinct roots of each multiplicity two, etc. So we can like pre-classify. I don't want to say classify because it's not enough. You can pre-classify uh, what, what can happen from the root, like the root. Uh, uh, the root uh, combinatorics. And uh, the full classification of multiply transitives was done over complex numbers by Dubrov, Medvedev, and Tay. And I rapidly show like a sub list of what they have in their joint paper. And what the, the question I have in mind since uh, like uh, one year and a half is to like explore. Of course, the classification is done. But something is not completely yet understood, I, I guess. It's beyond the possible root types at order four. What is the branching diagram at orders five, six, etc.? And for, furthermore, for each root type, it's not absolutely clear what is exactly the dimension drop for the group of symmetries, because it depends on what will happen at higher order, in fact. So this is not finished. Uh, I have a, a PhD student, Julien Ayad, who is looking at this. One reason uh, I, I did, did not want to hurry up for presenting lectures in Greek uh, group is that because I wanted to somehow be more advanced about that. But anyway, I, I was not able. So I will present something which is not complete. But before I do that, I rapidly survey something which was done joint with Pavel Nurovsky about analogous PD systems. So there are much less branches, in fact. Unexpected, it, it was unexpected, but it, it's much less branches. And I want to say that uh, we treated like, so if you take a CR IPR surface in C3, so it's W theta of Z1, Z2, Z1 bar, Z2 bar, W bar, so you have something which is like you complexify. So you consider this Z1 bar as a new complex coordinate A. It can be even everything real. And then you have what I call a submanifold of solution, which is Z is equal Q of X, Y, A, B, C. And equivalently, you can solve C in terms of A, B, X, Y, Z, et cetera. So I don't enter. And if you consider equivalences of the PD system or the CR manifold, it's somehow equivalent. It's roughly equivalent. It's not, it's not precisely equivalent, but there are deep analogies between the two objects. So you, are, you come up with something very elementary that Omid uh, masters very well, that we have like a simultaneous diffeomorphism in the X, Y, Z space and the A, B, C space, which is essentially the parameter space. So we have the variable space, X, Y, Z, and the parameter space, and the two spaces go together. And more precisely, as soon as you have a diffeomorphism in the, in the, in the, in the uh, variable space, you have uniquely associated a diffeomorphism in the parameter space. In a sense, A is Z X of zero, B is Z Y of zero, and C is Z of zero. And then uh, there is a discussion that I will drop because it's, I want to save time for the power series method of equivalence. All this is about uh, uh, Levy form. So you compute the Lie brackets between the sections of the two distributions, I said. So you have two Levy matrices. And contrary to the complex uh, Cauchy Riemann case, the two Levy matri matrices are not conjugate to each other. But nevertheless, the ranks of the two Levy forms of the function Q and the function P are the same because they exchange with each other by multiplication by invert invertible matrix, in fact. PY is, no, it, it's not a matrix because it's just one dimensional. Anyway, so this is the proof, but I skip. But when you go first, when you, so suppose that you consider that everything was done by people like Ashtrudi, like Chern Moser, 
Dubrov Medvedev et T, and you want to do the same in parasier structures for the case of degenerate. So it is, if it is fully degenerate, it's just flat, it's too easy. So you assume that the Levy form is of rank one. So you assume that the determinant uh, is, equal to, is equal to zero, but of rank, uh, this matrix should be of rank two, in fact. Okay. And then you are conducted to introduce another object, which is a Freeman matrix. And we have instead of second order derivative y a here, you have x, x, a. And then you assume that it is invertible matrix. And you can show that if this matrix is identically zero, determinant identically zero, again, it's a degenerate situation. So I don't want to present this in detail. So the main assumption is that this determinant vanishes. The Levy form is identically of rank one, which means that this sub-determinant is non-zero, and this determinant is non-zero also. But unexpectedly, you realize that contrary to the Levy form, this to be a full rank is not equivalent to this to be a full rank. It is not equivalent. Anyway, we have a formula which shows that the rank, even the matrices are invariant, and then change of coordinates. Okay, so you, you, see, you see this here with this expression. And here, there is a justification in terms of power series very elementary that the Freeman form of the function Q is essentially a coefficient two beta here with beta x, x, b coefficient. And the Freeman of P is essentially is gamma, which is the a, 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 y coefficient. And there is no reason why beta should be non-zero if only gamma is non-zero. So there are really two independent objects in the parasier context. And then we are conducted to introduce uh, two definitions. We say that if the Levy form is degenerate everywhere of rank one, then the manifold of solution is too non-degenerate with respect to parameters. If the matrix Q with the third order derivatives on the bottom is invertible, and the same too non-degenerate with respect to variables, if the analogous matrix with the P on the bottom instead of uh, with, with the P instead of the Q is invertible. And then I skip some details, okay? And you make the, the two assumptions as the main assumption of the theorem. There are some like elementary details. This is in fact already published. And then you start in the joint paper with Pavel. We start by setting up an equivalence method like G structure, initial J structure. So you have five initial one forms and you have like a reduction of GL5 from the beginning, because if you have to stabilize the two distributions, etc., the contact distribution. So this explains why there is only F1 and zeros after here. Also the fact that you, that you, that you stabilize the first distribution explains the two by two block here. And the second distribution is explained by this two by two block. And then after several computations, you are conducted to somehow change the co-frame even the initial core frame, but it's not so difficult because the expressions are, are manageable here, okay? And then uh, you restart the process with these new uh, one forms, and then you, you give a lot of uh, cakes and wine to Pavel, and he works a lot, and then he is able to do undoable computations, which conducts to the following uh, theorem. So first is the first one. So you start, okay, reducing the problem to a certain E structure. In fact, we don't compute the full E structure because we don't need it for homogeneous models. So first we have to like normalize and int, uh, absorb torsion, normalize essential torsion, reduce the bundle. And after everything is cleaned up, you have five forms which are much modified and which depend on this five uh, 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 vertical variables, and you have like certain invariants which appear. So I don't want to enter the details because it's really crazy, the computation, but the good news is that the three invariants that we encounter are relatively simple. And we encounter the Wunschmann invariant here, which was relatively unexpected to us. And also we, re, we, we encounter what is called the Monge invariant that we used in, a, in another paper on Einstein Val geometry because integrating this, integrating the, the, the Wunschmann invariant is very, uh, uh, unable, we are unable to do 
nobody's really able to do it, except in, in specific situation with simplifying assumption. But on the contrary, the Wunschmann invariant is something very basic. It tells you that the function f as a function of p is contained in a conic, in a plane, essentially. So it's very easy to integrate. And we use this information in another paper anyway. So now is what I wanted to present, and I will skip uh, a stop in a few seconds about this uh, description of results. We were able to have a full branching diagram which conducts to uh, homogeneous models or not. So we have something, some branches conduct, conduct to a differential contradiction, and we don't have homogeneous models. But I discussed several times with Pavel about method of equivalence. I, I, I learned a lot from him. I understood deeply many things. I was very, very grateful to him because he always repeated to me, uh, equivalence method, the strength of equivalence method is really to create the branches. Because once you know that you are in a different branch, it's from the process that you know in advance that the models or the objects that you recover from one branch are necessarily non-equivalent to the other branch. But as everybody knows, in several uh, geometric structures, it's like undoable computationally. You, you have after some, some, some level of advance on the Carter method of equivalence, you encounter unfeasible uh, creation of branches. That's the problem. So it's ideal. It's ideally it's the best you can do. And many, many uh, good classification and like finished uh, terminated classification problems were done because you use many extra tools. You use many weapons, many different tools to converge to the full classification, forgetting about the complexity of the possible branching diagram, which is relatively difficult to, to get. And I am interested in understanding this better. So just quickly, I say that in this paper, we were able to create the branches, to create the homogeneous model, and to find the list. And it's, it's very related to the famous paper in Acta Mathematica of Fels and Karl. And it was little project to go to dimension seven, but I don't, I don't think it's like uh, easily doable. And it would be something like disjoint from Igor Zelenko's works because it would be about something of Levy rank one in Sierra dimension three or para Sierra dimension three. And uh, Igor Zelenko and his students, they worked on rank n minus one Levy form. So in a sense, as I said in the first lecture, the rank one is easier in a sense. It should be easier, I think. So now we have like uh, the Liège of the model, et cetera, so I skip this. In another short paper with no details uh, uh, last year, uh, I wanted to like uh, do the same with the power series of equivalence, power series method of equivalence, which is rather different. Not only the computations are completely different, but the spirit is, is different. So let me review a bit of this like short description of results without entering the ideas of proof by lack of time. So I was not doing this about para CR manifold, but about CR manifold. So it's like in C3, five dimensional. So there is a terminology which goes back to Felskop, I think is to C21, which means two non-degenerates, this three by three determinant I showed you. And the Levy form is of rank one. So Felskop in a using purely algebra, Lie algebraic methods were able to classify them. And unexpectedly they showed that everything is tube, all the models are tube, which means a product of a surface S2 in R3 times I R3, which I is a square root of minus one. So I wanted to do the same because uh, with the power series method of equivalence, because it's a bit lacking, the tree is a bit lacking in the literature, although the, the classification is already done. So I showed you, I showed you very rapidly because I want to enter uh, another topic after that, about, again, about power series method of equivalence. So first, last lecture, first lecture, I was speaking about Asian rank one hypersurfaces in Rn plus one. So the baby case is a case of surfaces in R3 with Asian rank one. And here is a branching diagram. I was saying something wrong last time. I did not remember, I, for, uh, I apologize. So the, the branching diagram is this. So you have a certain 
Taylor series coefficient F31. And you have to distinguish the case because it is a relative invariant, you have to show this, whether it vanishes or not. And then, yes, there is a single model. It does not depend on parameters. And it is homogeneous model, sorry. And then there is a new Taylor coefficient F50. And when F50 is non-zero, you have a one parameter family of models. But in fact, in the list of Felskarop, which is also classical, it goes back to maybe the 19th century, you have in this case three subcases because when you want to integrate the Lie algebra, you have to discuss cases. But in my view, I prefer to gather all these models in just one branch, parameterized by a, by a certain parameter theta. And theta is really an invariant. Different theta, theta, different theta prime conducts to inequivalent, a finally inequivalent homogeneous models. So here, computationally, it's very basic. It's very elementary and much less, much less complex than Cartan's approach. As uh, uh, Mikhail C. Tormeski always said, I, I completely agree with him. I completely agree. Uh, and then I want to say that you just read uh, the Taylor coefficients step by step. You normalize by using an affine transformation, as I said in the first lecture. And after some moment, you see that some, something becomes invariant. And then you have to, to create a branch. And so, for instance, is a branch when uh, F31 is non zero. I don't enter the details, it's on the computer. You, after some while, compute the Taylor series with very, very uh, economical computations because it's just numerical here. There is no formal uh, variable, so it's just numerical. It's straightforward in a sense. And you, you arrive at a certain Lie algebra, which is like, like first, first result. So I don't discuss integration of this Lie algebra because I did not touch this because as I said, in the last month, I was mainly interested in like understanding more the equivalence problem, the, some equivalence methods to like overcome the computational difficulties. This was my main point of action last month. So I did not try to like uh, complete some classification by integrating the like, algebra, which as Boris Dubrov told me once is a non-trivial job, this I know. There is also a conjecture of Lee in the third volume of the theory of the transformation group and about this integration of Lie algebras, which is still unsolved. Anyway, so in, this, in, the, in the other branch, you get the maximal homogeneous model. And there is a branch where F70 is this theta. And I have a full representation of the Lie algebra here. And since I am like, uh, telling you this about, uh, a bit about this. I want to, this will be finished in a while and then I will concentrate on what I want to say today. Before I do this, I go to a MAPL file because I did not have time to somehow prepare for today the presentation of this. So I go to Maple. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's, it's not here. Uh, it's here, it's here. It's, uh, I think it's here. So I, I treated uh, like one year ago on computer, almost everything of surfaces in R4, in C4, sorry. And I, I come up with some equations like this. So to get a homogeneous model, so I'll just show you because this um, Day in a sense, I'm not just, I'm not writing much currently, I'm just computing. So I play with such, such kind of things. So this is for a surface in R4 or C4. I think it's the same in this case. And to have a homogeneous model, I need these equations to be satisfied, to be zero. So I gather some necess necessary conditions. Uh, and, and this is what you can view from the recurrence relations between differential invariants that Olver and his students are developing since 20 or 30 years. So you can view this, what I capture from the power series method of equivalence as something which can also come from Lee and Olver view from the recurrence relation from uh, the differential invariant algebra. 
And the, the thing is that this equation should be satisfied to have a homogeneous model, and they are numerous uh, because I think I go to order eight at this, in, in this branch. It's one of the branch. There are about 50 branches in this uh, classification. And uh, I show you that when you, when you ask Maple to look at what it is, so these equations are algebraic in six variables in this branch, okay? And they are like 25. And they look like uh, clumsy. They, they look like uh, dirty, of course. But I like it. I like when it is dirty. Joel, uh, yeah? I think I completely lost. What is this equation, E25? What do they mean? Are they okay. or what? Of course, I could not present what it is. So let me summarize. So just, just well, what are, are these I, I try. I tried to summarize. You, you are completely right to protest, uh, Boris, because I'm just like not explaining much. So what I want to say is that suppose that so it's, it was for a surface in, in, in C4. So this means that instead of one equation, you have two equations, U and V, function of X and Y. So by some process, you come, you come up with creating a few branches from small order Taylor coefficient. And then after a while, you obtain some Taylor coefficient like this F50. If you go, go, go further to this thing, so you see that the G50, so you should have so U equal F of XY, V equal G of XY, okay? Okay, so because it is a surface in it is a surface uh, in C4, okay? So you have two equations, co-dimension two. And then uh, after, in some of the branches, you, 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 you come up with some relative invariance, Taylor coefficient, which I call, which, which are these, these ones, okay? These ones, and I can change the order. Maybe if you want, I just drop this, okay? So that you, there is no, no mix. So you have six variables, uh, which are these Taylor coefficients that in principle, in Carton's method equivalence, you can, you can get them. But when you play with Carton's method of equivalence, you play with them functionally. You play with them as functions. So there is a high price to pay, an extremely high price to pay about this because instead of just a Taylor coefficient, which is like F40, the coefficient of x4 over factorial of four, you play with the partial, it's not that in fact, you play with the differential invariant, which is an astronomically ex, uh, a complicated expression, which depends on the fourth order jet of f, and which incorporates f differentiated four times with respect to x. So, and for some time I was not, like believing what, what Oliver wrote in many of his papers saying, no, no, don't play with the explicit expressions of the differential invariance. So this means that to the, to the Taylor coefficient F4 of zero, there should correspond a differential invariant, which is like big, big and like not, not manageable on a computer. And this is really the, the, the point the, the, uh, in, in my understanding, because I, I, I struggled during 10 years with parametric Carton method of equivalence like, like, like Pavel did. And I was stuck more than him because he's stronger than me, than me on Carton's method of equivalence. But I was always like worried by, by the complexity of these differential invariants. And now in, in, in the power series of method of equivalence, I know that this Taylor coefficient also in the case of affine, in the case of affine, this F50, which I normalize step by step, is in principle an affine differential invariant, which is a bit big, not as big as in the CR case. In the CR case, it's one, one million terms sometimes. So it's not unmanageable. But here, if I do accept that this F50 is only the value at zero of the corresponding differential invariant, then I can restrict on the Carton bundle myself to work over, over zero only. And even there is an inductive process of fiber over fiber. There is like, like, there is like a, a successive construction of fibers a, a stability group 
which achieves each step, you normalize the Taylor coefficient and you place yourself on a fiber over just a point over all the points of the preceding fiber inductively. So this is why the computations are simplified magically in a sense. As I, as I want to say that because I played during 10 years with Carton's method of equivalence and also with this during one year and a half, I was able to compare the advantage uh, uh, computationally of the power series method of equivalence. And what I want to say is that with Carton's method, I think it's almost inaccessible to go to others like order eight and or nine for CR manifolds of dimension three in C2, it's like almost undoable to, 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 to view what's happening there. And when I do apply the power series method of equivalence, I can go to higher orders because the computations are, they play with macroscopic objects. They say to yourself that the F50, which looks like just a complex number, it's just a number, it's not a function. But to hit, it corresponds to a, a, a complicated object, which is the differential invariant. And because you summarize and compactify substantially this object, you can and you want go to much higher order to explore the, the trees. What I wanted to say by this, I can like explore the trees, uh, which, which are like difficult to, to, to reach. And in this example, I, I showed like just roughly here with no, no, no detail. I did go like perhaps to order eight, I don't remember. No, because the original file, just an extra auxiliary file. I did go to the, this order eight and I could create a supplementary equation by some process so that this surface is homogeneous. So these are necessary uh, uh, equations. And if you want to understand in the, ten, in the sense of Carton or Lee, these are algebraic equations in the differential invariance. So this means that you are working in the algebra of differential invariance. But if you want to restrict yourself in the baby power series of method of equivalence, you just understand only this complex Taylor coefficient. As I said, it is the same, it is equivalent in a sense. So you can safely say to yourself, you have these uh, equations to be satisfied. And I was like astonished at that point to say that it's not here. I have just another file, which is even more, more like. So you can, you can ask Maple to simplify this equation. In this case, it's not really simplified. I'm sorry. So this is uh, Maple easily computes a Grubner basis of this algebraic uh, variety. But there is another example, which I really want to show you, which is what uh, Cameron did uh, with, uh, with uh, Shadwick and also with uh, uh, Rsu. Uh, let, let me find it. Let me find it. No, 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 no. It's not here. It's not here. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I did not prepare it. So I don't, I, I, I don't know. It is here. I'm sorry. It is here. Okay, it's here. So look, this is for another problem. It's for second order ODEs that I will present in two minutes. I will start to re re recover. So it's order eight. I'm going to order eight, which is not bad. Okay. So these are the, the equations that I produce and R S, they, they, they should be R S and T. Only R S appear here. So they are like transitivity parameters and they should be completely free. So you could, could not have a uh, relation between them. So this means that all the coefficients on R on S should be vanishing. And this is how I capture this, this uh, algebraic equations. So I do capture these algebraic equations by some little procedure. And you have 20 equations here. Okay, it's order eight. And so for having a second order homogeneous equation, I need this equation to be satisfied. And then, uh, they depend on four variables, which are Taylor coefficients. And by some magic, Grobner basis tells me that these 20 equations reduce only to these five algebraic equations. So I repeat, so I, I had another example with 100 such equations, which reduced to five, but I did not, I was not able to, to find in my file because I, I, I touched a lot of uh, such things and did not like 
type a memoir by latex, so I don't remember everything. But this is a universal phenomenon. So this process is, uh, is taking, taking place in the algebra of differential invariance that Lee himself understood in his complete works and that Olver is developing since 20 or 30 years. And by some unexpected magic, I always observe this phenomenon. So from Carton's method of equivalence, I'm not at all able to produce this equation. I repeat myself, I repeat something that although, although I was playing, playing during 20 years with Carton's, uh, 10 years with Carton's method of equivalence, I am not able to push the method so far that I can formulate this equation. I'm not able because I am like stuck with the complexity of equation. And maybe one reason is that the production of this equation was well understood by Lee with his recurrence formulas, but with Carton's method of equivalence, we don't like capture rightly these equations. So of course, in the joint paper with Pavel, he was able by some indirect process in the CR case to capture something similar to this. And when he showed to me, I said to myself, oh, but Oliver is repeating his paper that there are some recurrence relations. I looked at them in some special cases, easy cases. Look, it's algebraic. Look, it's the same as Pavel is doing. So there should be some reason why it's the same. And then now the reason is that these algebraic equations, they are produced by the method. And they are completely produced by the power series equivalence method also, not only by Lee, not only by uh, indirectly by Carton. And then uh, I finish with this. So it was an important message and very informal. I apologize a bit. It's impossible to present the details because it's, it's a lot, a lot of computations until you arrive at this level of these 20 equations. It's not straightforward, but I somehow summarize what, how I can get to this point. And the phenomenon I always observe is that there is a crash, a collapse of complexity from these algebraic equations, which is intimately, intimately related to the fact that there is an homogeneous model behind the, the, the structure we're looking at. So this is universal. Let me stop about this and we start with the slides. Okay, so now this is something I've done with this uh, CR classification, which was done by Felskop, not uh, with something very deep using Lie algebra uh, tools. But I was able to do the same with uh, this power series method, method of equivalence. It was absolutely non-trivial by some, because I was lazy, I did not decide to, to, to type 50 pages of details and then the paper was reje rejected, of course. But then it was like very non-trivial on computer because in the branches there is a, I just summarize, when you assume that the Levy determinant is vanishing, you have to take account in the equations that you are producing that it's vanishing. So it is a very difficult part. And for several uh, months, I was convinced that you cannot avoid to explicitly compute this differential invariant to, to do such computations. And I was able one year and a half ago to avoid this completely. I tried to explain uh, next lecture this. So here is also for CRKs, the branching diagram. And you have some similar computations as those are done and the paper on archive is with absolutely no details. And then you produce the vectors, okay? You produce the F normalized. As you, as you see, there are a lot of Taylor coefficients. It depends on five variables instead of two now. And in the branch I showed, there is some theta which appear also here. But as I said, I can reach uh, order 10, which I was not at all able to do with Carton's method. Okay, let us stop about this and go to something more basic, which was redone recently by uh, Julien Ed, my PhD student. So it's much more simple now computationally, but it's, I try to like give a bit more details about the computations. So it's something which was very much studied by Kamran and uh, his co-authors, also uh, by Godliski and uh, Pavel Nurovsky. So it's second order OD. There was a very nice talk by Denis about this in first lecture. But we are looking at uh, them modulo fiber preserving transformation. By some like uh, naive, uh, naive uh, understanding, I always thought it was it is simpler than the case of uh, of, uh, 
it, it looks that it's simpler than the general point transfer. It, it is the contrary. It's more complicated. And then uh, first, in a joint paper with Ego Fu and Julien Head, we were able to set up a normal form in the sense of Moser, Poincaré, and Zitormeski, like a preliminary normal form before you conduct the equivalence method to reach the homogeneous models. And says uh, there is a little CRM which tells you that there is a unique choice of normalized formal power series. Also, we have the convergent uh, uh, formulation also. It's just first statement is for formal case. So with f of zero, fx of zero, so a, a little normalization on f on g of the form x plus fx, y plus gx, which brings uh, a, a given. So it should be g here instead of f here y x x equal g of x y p to a normal form which satisfies these normalization conditions. And furthermore, it's not stated here, the group of stabilization of this normal form is at least three-dimensional, at most three-dimensional. It's not infinite dimensional. So in the real analytic category, we were able, like using cauchy kowalski CRM, able to say that the transformation, which is formal, is in fact convergent. So everything is analytic. So here is a normal form. So you see the Taylor coefficients, which are like uh, uh, useful. They are the relative invariance. So it's very nice to see that it's exactly the same that you, you see in the papers of Cameron. They are the same, but as I said, they are the values at zero of this differential invariance that Cameron found using Cartan's method. And then uh, uh, he, there is a little description in this part of the slide of what Cameron did. Of course, he take uh, like uh, one forms. So there are prolongation of the diffeomorphism, P, Y, X, X. There is uh, this one forms, this one forms, the initial G structure, and then you, you launch the Carton method of equivalence and you come up with uh, in, in an E structure. Uh, I don't remember whether it's Carton connection or not, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not very expert of Cartan connection, I must, uh, I must say. Uh, so it's a six dimensional bundle and they appear two, three invariants, okay? I1, I2, I3, and the explicit expressions are this. So here, the translation to the Taylor coefficient is not very difficult. In other contexts, there is a high discrepancy of complexity, not here. Okay, so, and the on one forms alpha, beta, gamma uh, are, are given by these formulas. And then I tried to explain very quickly the other point of view, Poincaré's point of view, the Zitomersky point, point of view, which is to say that instead of constructing a Cartan bundle with differential forms, instead of doing this, you just, you just work basically with power series, like very elementary, like with like purely algebraic, like Lagrange. Lagrange was saying, Joseph Lagrange, the French mathematician, was saying, Oh, no, no, don't, don't, don't borrow. It's boring, this uh, infinitesimal, these derivatives are something too complicated. I just want to, to, to work with power series. It's, it's too simple. It's just algebra. This Lagrange repeated everywhere in his paper. So even before Poincaré, there was Lagrange. So I want to explain you just roughly why, what is the point of view between the power series method of equivalence, the first point of view. So I repeat something which is well known that for a second order ODEs uh, under fiber, trans uh, fiber preserving transformations, the, the group is dimension six and the Lie uh, generators are, are six. So by Lie criterion, you pro prolong it, prolong to, to jet order two the, the vector field. You assume that it is tangent to the equation and you get this. Ah, this is what I want to have. This equation is the main equation. So this equation that you, that you get by looking at the model, the maximal flat model, y xs is equal to zero, by just saying that x is tangent, the second prolongation is tangent, you, 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 you get to this equation. So this is, this is a Lie point of view, not yet the, 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 the point of view of normal form. So you solve it and you get the generators. But the thing is, and this is, uh, the, so the, the, this is where you see convergences between two different parts of mathematics, like unification of two different parts of mathematics, because these 
little expression is the same as the one that you obtain or you encounter, the same as the one you, you, you reach or you, you see necessarily when you want to, to take a normal form. So, so does this mean you, you, let, you, let, you let act the group of fiber preserving diffeomorphisms. And so you have some freedom, which is f of x and g of x, y, these two components of diffeomorphisms, the infinite Taylor series. And they act, this freedom acts, so it was well presented by Zitomirsky in his lectures, this freedom acts on the second order PDEs. And the main action, so there is a lot of nonlinear terms, which I don't show, I don't want to show now, of course, the nonlinear term come, 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 come back later, as I showed you, by this algebraic equation. At some point, some nonlinearity will come up, of course. But also here, there's some nonlinearity which is hidden. But at the top level, when you fix the order and you like neglect what is lower order, at the top level, you see something linear in the partial derivatives of the two components of the diffeomorphism acting. So of course, so I, I had this question since one year and a half in my, in my mind, how to like make unification between Carton's point of view and Poincaré's point of view, how to do it? Of course, it would be a big dream, but of course it's not so trivial because the computations are so different. Of course, everybody wants to come to Roma but the paths are different, and the paths of Carton and, and Poincaré are rather different, in fact. So it's still a dream to like, like more, understand more, uh, create more bridges, more connections between Carton and Poincaré, but it, it requires uh, some time. It cannot be done quickly. Okay, so now I want to say that this linear term tells you. So it's, there is a general theory about image, imaginary image, image sorry, of this linear operator and complement, complementary space. But this means that it's not written in this slide that you proceed order by order by neglecting what's happening in lower orders. So when you explore this, you explore, you, you, you rapidly find a complementary space to the imaginary part. It's not very difficult. Formally, it's not very difficult. It is essentially uh, uh, explained here. And then there is a little proposition which says, tells you that if fx is an O of x square and if g of xy is, 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 is satisfies this, then the restriction of this linear operator or to, to this space is injected. And then you find the complementary space and you get the normal form that I showed just now or that I re-showed just quickly and that's this normal form, but rather easy, okay? So now I pass to another thing, which is the next step. As I said, as I said, the dream, one of the dreams, because we have many dreams, everybody has many mathematical dreams. My dream is to get, to be computationally efficient enough to capture, to view, to, to, to construct the trees the branching trees, which are really created invariantly by the equivalence of objects. And uh, this is one branching tree that by redoing with a different method Cameron's classification, Julien Ed was able to get the branching diagram here for second order ODEs, modulo fiber preserving transformations. So I'm just borrowing some of his slides because he gave a talk in Orsay last Monday. So I, I just, because I'm just lazy, I, I decided to use his slides. So maybe they are like more understandable than mine. And so, as you say, you have a first, a second order OD, another one, and you take fiber preserving diffeomorphism, in Taylor series, et cetera, okay, and F and G. And then what I did not explain yet, and what Julian did it better than me, is that the, the, when you express that this diffeomorphism exchange one equation to the other, you get this fundamental equation, which is highly nonlinear. And infinitesimally, which means that you, if you differentiate this equation, 
which means that you look at a vector field, which is an infinitesimal symmetry in the sense of Li of such an ODE, then you get this equation. So you, you have a, a translation, a view from the first one to the second one. So I don't explain in details, okay? And what do we do? We do what I already said. We start from a second order ODE and we perform several different morphisms, but contrary to Carton, we proceed order by order. So this means that we start by order one, order two, order three, and we don't look at how all the higher order terms change. So we proceed like with complex numbers, just with the Taylor coefficients, until we fully normalize a certain order and we pass to, ne to the next order, okay? And then uh, what, I, what I wanted to, what I already in fact showed you to, on, on Maple, this was this file, no, this one, plutôt, uh, this one, we, we, we have produced these equations. I tried now to explain a bit more here in the branch where the two invariants are non-zero and then by some easy uh, reasoning, you can show that you normalize them to one. So let us come back to the tree. So I'm just saying that I'm looking at some of this branch. No, no, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly this. I think it is this one. So we look at one branch, one of the branches, okay? And what's happening? So this is so this is an example, the only example. Okay, so we have this vector field which should be tangent. The second prolongation should be tangent to this second order OD. And then in the process, because we already know from the normal forms that the isotropy group is at most three dimensional, we know that this number, this vector field depends on three because the first order jet space is dimension three plus three because the isotropy is three dimensional. So it depends on six free constants. So it is a Lie algebra of dimension at most six, okay? And then what do you do? Is then you, you, you place yourself in this branch, okay? And so, so this is more a description of what's happening before you finish in a branch, okay? In this, so now in this branch, okay? You, pro, you, you project the power series on other n terms as, as here. And now you look at the, the, so it's just even a description of what's happening in small orders here, okay? So you can make, once you have stabilized uh, the, the, the first order prolongation or second order prolongation, you, you, you must uh, uh, have the stability group. So this is an explanation of this. These are the typical equations that we always play with. So maybe I should open another Maple file because this is very, very what I'm doing very, very often all the day playing with this. So these are the, the, the normalization equation, coefficient by coefficient. And for instance, here, what you realize is that you can use this G, no, this G to one because F1 is non-zero because Fx at zero should be non-zero. You can use this Taylor coefficient, which is freedom, to normalize the Q010 and the R010 to be zero. And you restart the process. Okay, so this is an explanation of what, what it is here. So now what I want to say is what, so I stop about uh, 3D uh, PDCs, uh, second order of these. And I try to do the same, so I'm, we're starting to do it. Let me give me five or 10 minutes because I don't want to go over time because uh, I'm speaking of things which are just too survey. It's not very understandable what I'm saying. I, I apologize. So I'm saying that I, I'm looking at the same kind of problem with fiber tra preserving transformations. So F does not depend on, on Z, G does not depend on Z, but the determinant is non Z. So here is a manuscript. So X prime is lambda X plus mu Y plus et cetera, new X plus tau Y plus et cetera. And we assume that this subdeterminant is non-zero. So there is a way of speaking about total differentiation operators also. And then what I want first to say is that I prefer to work in the submanifold of solutions. It is essentially equivalent. So Z is a function of X, Y, ABC. 
And on the, on the right space, because you have an equivalence, you have two objects which are equivalent through the map. By the way, in Carton's method, usually people forget about the second object. They construct a bundle, bundle on the left object and they forget about the right object. But in the power series of method of equivalence, we do always have the two objects in front of us. We always have both of them. So here we have Z prime equals C prime plus X prime, A prime plus Y prime, B prime plus O X prime, Y prime of two. And if we express that it is an equivalence, we are able to show, as I already said, that the diffeomorphism in the parameter space is uniquely induced from the diffeomorphism from the variable space, okay? These are the formulas, okay? So we implement these formulas on Maple, okay, of course. Before, just for fun, we look at the model, the like maximal model with right-hand side equal to, to zero. We realize that the isotropy is seven dimensional. So the group is 12, 12 dimensional. I did not like uh, try to do the structure. I think it's something people are much more expert than me in the audience. So the parameter of isotropy are seven. They are gathered order by order. It's funny to see that contrary to the general PDKs, you have no isotropy parameter in at order four, which correspond to there is no G2 in the Tanaka uh, grading, only G1 here. Here is a Poincaré normal form. So you, you can show rather easily that all these Taylor coefficients, you can put them zero by means of these uh, co coefficients of the power series. And then uh, you reach a point where you normalize all third order terms. So this means that there is zero here for third order terms. And then there are fourth order terms. So there is like a carton quartic, but it's not carton. It's a bit analogous to carton quartics for five variable paper. But here is, it's a bit fun because we have nine, it remains nine Taylor coefficients. Once you have normalized all this, it remains nine and you can still normalize one Taylor coefficient. So it remains eight, exactly this one. So first time I wanted to, I, I said to myself, it's better to normalize F2020L, but then I changed my mind. I prefer to normalize F1111L. So for L equals zero, so this means that F11110, I can put to zero, I can normalize to zero. So this means that in this Taylor coefficient, there are only eight. So sorry, in this manuscript is the opposite choice. Anyway, I show you something uh, more like up to date. Here is up to date. And now is the starting of the story. And I will stop in five minutes. I don't want to, over, to go over time. So here, this is the matrix which tells you at order four, how the Taylor coefficients change from one left uh, second order PDE to another right second order PDE. So there is a eight by eight matrix, which depends on what? On five constants, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, which is in GL2, and also a chi, which I do not show here. Everything is multiplied by one over chi, alpha, delta, minus beta, gamma, square. So there is an eight by eight matrix. So you still have essentially four constants to normalize eight Taylor coefficients. And it was like bit, big fun, big fun this because, so we have this. So what are the normal forms? Easy. So first I go to, yes, I go, no, 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 I, I said I did it orally. I, I will do it orally, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I do it orally. I did not prepare something on slides. So what I said is that it is well known that the irreducible representations of GL2 or CSL2 are just the binary quartics, uh, the bi binary forms. So this is a representation in C8, eight dimensional representation of GL2. So necessarily it splits in irreducible representations. And what is the splitting? 
So we, we, we spent some time on this it's because we, we were not at all like expert of that. And after some, some work, we were able to say that after a change of base, which meant a, 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 a matrix of change of basis in, in, this, in, in this eight dimensional vector space, you have this block by block uh, irreducible decomposition in two irreducible representations. And because we know that uh, binary forms are the only irreducible representations, we just look at normal forms. So this is like just a small manuscript about uh, like something about binary forms. Binary form is just a sum x power something, y power something with a sum of the degrees equal to a constant n, okay? And you let act, act GL2 on it. These are the, the, the transformation formulas, which we borrow from all the book, okay? And then uh, we said it should be the same. So we found the matrix of change of base. So everything worked well, okay? And then uh, from uh, classical, uh, like 17th century mathematics, it's already known that the normal forms for quartics, for binary quartics, modulo GL2 are known. The first family depends on a parameter mu, which is an invariant. And the mu is like, uh, uh, like uh, indicated by the cross ratio, okay? And then uh, there are some other, some other forms over complex numbers. And there is an open question uh, to do the same, to classify such, such speedy system over the reals. I think it's not done by Dubrov, Medvedev, and T. And even for hyper-preserving transformations, if you want to do the same as Cameron did like 30 years ago, you should do the real case. But the problem is that the real case is much harder because instead of six branches, so now I, I summarize. At this point, you create six branches. That's all. It's, and they are completely disjoint. So because the normal forms are, are di distinct and the group, the stability group are distinct. And for the real case, this is again the complex case in, in this table. For the, for the real case, uh, it's in, in exercises of the book of Gurevich. So, and also in a paper of, of uh, Zeman in uh, catastrophe theory, I, I saw some reference. On it. So we do not tackle this yet. So we just pass to the complex numbers first, because as I said, the first thing I want to do is to create the branching trees because they are missing in the literature. And now I, I almost, almost finished for, for today. So I again go to a manuscript, so this is, this is like, I come back to the general ODEs, not fiber preserving, because in this case, it's simpler. As I said, it is unexpected. I saw, always saw that the general PDEs is, is more complicated, but it is the opposite. The, the fiber preserving is more complicated. Another uh, uh, proof of this claim is that for the case which was treated by Dubrov, Medvedev, and T, when you go to power series method of equivalence, you only get a five by five matrix because you can normalize more Taylor coefficients or other four because the transformation is not fiber preserving. You have more Taylor coefficients. So this means that you directly see the quartic, the binary quartic, you di directly ap apply what is known, okay? And you verify that infinitesimally uh, everything goes well. Okay, this is again, this is again something uh, about these normal forms. Uh, okay, and what I want to say, uh, just one word by one minute, it will be enough. And this was done, this was said by Chitomirsky also, and I fully agree with him. The interest of the power series of method of equivalence is that it also enables you to treat discrete equivalences, which as far as I know, Carton's method is unable to do. And there is a reason for that. Uh, so I summarize uh, roughly because the point of view of Sophus Lee and the one of Carton was continuous group of transformations, not infinite, of course, uh, infinite in cardinal. But of course, they are not discrete. So you don't view really them because you always play with vector field, infinitesimally, in a sense, with differential forms, etc. 
But when you play with power series of method equivalence, you lose a lot, of course. You lose a lot because you play only with power series truncated. It's just like too rough. It's too elementary. But you lose also because you lose the, the functional point of view. You lose it, as I said. But when you, you, you gain something, you gain first, as I said, computational complexity collapses. It's much less complex. The second thing you, you get, which I understood only like four weeks ago, and I did not understand before, is that when you proceed order by order, at each step, you can apply what is known from linear representation theory of groups. Just linear representation theory of groups, because once you have normalized what is on lower order Taylor coefficients, then you look at a group which stabilizes the lower order Taylor coefficients and which acts linearly on the Taylor coefficients of the order you're looking at. So by some magic, the non-linear features just are absent. And this was not the case when I played with Carton's method of equivalence. And I just finished with a few slides because it is not in the books. But of course, with, with Julian Ed, we ask ourselves a question. I come back to this, to, this, uh, to, this, uh, to this thing. Of course, it is in the book that for different new, different from new prime, they are not equivalent under GL2. But then what is a stability group? From the point of view of Lee, the stability group is just identity, because close to the identity in the full group, it is almost evident from uh, what you do, that it is zero. But there is a discrete group of stability. And we, uh, Julien essentially, was able to compute the stability group in the sense of discrete finite group, in fact, for different values of nu and the jump. They, they are not just uh, the jump, I don't remember because I did not include in these slides. The jump is about nu equals square root of three or plus or minus one, I don't remember. So there is a further further creation of branches here also. So I think I'm essentially done for today. And here I just uh, wanted to show in these slides that you recover the equivalence of cross ratio. And last phrase I would like to, to pronounce is the following. In the theory of Lee, when you lift group actions to jet bundles, what you want to find is transversals. So this means normal form is a transversal. Of course, transversal is not unique. And analogously, and this I did not know before, when the group is finite or discrete, the analog of a transversal is what is called a fundamental domain. And a fundamental domain is like in the modular function, is a domain where there is only one representative in the tessellation of the manifold of the group. So in principle, this is the very last phrase I want to pronounce, the unification between all methods of equivalence would require to also treat from the point of view of a certain method of equivalence, equivalence under discrete groups. So I'm done. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks very much, Joel. Um, are there any questions or comments for Joel? Uh, Joel? Yeah. Uh, may I ask you, uh, so probably, uh, <laughs> probably, definitely you explained, but I uh, missed or didn't understand well something conceptual. I understand well uh, that uh, hunting for homogeneous models uh, uh, so you prove that uh, a model is homogeneous if and only if at some point near the origin, say, its certain jet, the normal form of its certain jet is uh, special and you know how special it can be. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's not enough for me uh, to present a homogeneous model because you cannot take just uh, the, this normal form, uh, one of the normal forms for jet at one point and to throw away all higher order terms. Uh, in most cases, it doesn't work. No, no, I completely agree with you. Uh, I hide it. I, I did not say 
everything, of course. So what is your framework to present the model? Okay, so there is an important point that you, we discussed slightly about this together once. You have to, to infinitesimally perturb the origin. So this means, and so what you do, um, Michael, is, is that you, you, you translate slightly the origin and you look at what it gives, okay? So that to get a homogeneous model, you need some, some constancy of the normal form, of course, because if it is homogeneous under a geometric action, it should be the same at every point, of course. So you need to capture the kind of Taylor series that do have this property. And what I want to say is that I at all did not present this. There is in the, in the, the method I have at hand currently, which is not in Carton, unfortunately. So this is one of my dreams to, 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 to import what I will say and to put it in Carton's method of agreement also. So when you look at power series and you normalize, there is an infinitesimal counterpart of this. And also an infinitesimal counterpart when you slightly translate the origins, very slightly, infinitesimally. And this information, by some unexpected magic, I understood that it comes completely from saying that you have a tangential vector field, which is an infinitesimal symmetry up to a certain order, say order three, for instance. And then you just write down that the other three terms are pre pre preserved by the infinitesimal symmetry. And this is extremely simple computation. It's even much simpler than the normal form uh, uh, maple phi. And then this will be an action of a Lie algebra, the Lie algebra which stabilizes the things below as an action, as a Lie algebra action. When you integrate, it will be a Lie algebra group action. And linear, this is the main point, or affine, but never nonlinear on the order four terms, on the order four terms above. And then once you have this, and you have finished to normalize everything at order four, or order, or order seven, if you prefer, then it remains a bunch of equations to be satisfied so that this vector field is tangential, really, because it remains some, there, is, there, there are, in, in, in the normal form, there are some infinite branches which are easy to understand what I showed at some moment. And then because there are much more Taylor coefficients, there remain some and, uh, more numerous when you go to order eight, order, order nine, etc. there are more numerous. So these Taylor coefficients, which are extremely difficult to, to reach when you play with Carton's method, I was not able to do by the way. Now I can, because as I said, I play with these Taylor coefficient as complex numbers, not as functions. And then, by saying that this tangential vector field is tangent, you have a bunch of supplementary equations to be satisfied to have a homogeneous model. And these are exactly the equations I showed. And of course, as you said, there is an infinite number of such equations. So what I do apply in the theory of Olver and Lee, there are some finiteness theorems about the algebras of differential events. So of course, experimentally, in all the structures I played with, I saw that there are, there are some finiteness uh, structures at order seven, eight, always. It stabilizes always, no problem. But also, it is like theoretically, it is okay. So, your, uh, your approach uh, does it include on some step uh, uh, given uh, Taylor series uh, at one point recalculating? Recalcul they yes, but something, yes, uh, Mi Mihail, but a bit clever, more clever. Uh, we, we discuss because I know this. So, video. Sorry? Zoom meeting. Okay. As I said, when you say, because I did not present it at all in details, there is also the infinitesimal view of what to say of the translation, because if you really translate and recalculate the normal form, it's a I, I work, or you can do it infinitely, but I don't do that because I can reach information 
immediately with much less computation just by looking at an auxiliary MAPL file, which tells me that the tangential vector field tangential to the everything which is normalized the order below. So I get the information with almost no work. That's the thing. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Thank you. May I ask a question? Yes. Yes, yes please. Yeah. So, so, so you explained the uh, uh, expansion by Taylor's. So in that case, so do you use uh, user uh, uh, user Taylor expansion or weighted expansion? Yeah, weighted. So often weighted. I agree. Yeah. So you, you use the weighted also, expansion. Also weighted. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So so that uh, in that case, so the when you uh, use the method of expansion, so the if the uh, geometric structure is uh, Finite type and or infinite type are there uh, essential differences in, in the method? Or yeah, yeah, sure. But I must say to you that I never touch infinite type such structures. Yeah. What, I, what, I, what, I, what I presented today are always rigid structure with of finite type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, I, I, I did not encounter this difficulty as you, that you mentioned. I know it exists. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And which also, is very interesting, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, when you obtain the, the invariant in the their expansion method, mm -hmm. if your invariant is not necessarily constant, in that case, also you can so uh, conclude something uh, equivalence problems. So you mean when the, the invariant is a, is a parameter? It, it, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. not necessarily constant. Okay. It's not, yes. not a universal constant, not like one or two or, or zero. You mean like, oh. it, like I said theta, at some point I said theta. So this mm -hmm. means like an infinite number of inequivalent models. Yes, of course. So this mm -hmm. is something I don't understand because I, I repeat it a few times that I, I have something fixed at lower order which acts on, mm. on, on, on order higher. And okay. then I have in my mind since a few weeks uh, the question, oh, look, Joel, it would be a group action, linear group action parametrized by okay. all the constants which are below. Okay. I don't know whether there is something about this in the literature. You understand what I say? Of course, of course, there remain some, some constants which are invariants and mm -hmm. true invariants. It means that for, they exist and for different values, the model are, are inequivalent. Mm -hmm. And then it comes up with some linear representation of groups, which depend on parameters. That's strange, but it's so. But also in the expansion method, the, the, as a result, can you see easily the uh, structure of automorphism group or like that? So I Integrate, you mean? Integrate? Yeah, that is... Uh, uh, by their expansion, you obtain the invariant. Then, uh, in that case, uh, can you can you from that can you detect the algebra structure? Or, uh, oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Of course, of course. Okay. This is the main point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I did not show much about this. This is yes, of course. Uh, okay. I have some many files in which so I produce, and okay. also something which I want to say mm -hmm. is that. On Cartan's method of equivalence, you, 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 you don't see the group action on the space okay. with the power series model of equivalence. You see the action okay. on the space as it is. So you produce okay. the generator step by step, of course. Okay. At some point, very quickly, I showed okay. some structure in which there were the generators in the slide. But in the Cartan bundle, you produce uh, the Cartan bundle and you are essentially viewing the group itself, not the group action. So in my opinion, and that was a bit what I understood from Lee because I translated like two books of Lee, I think the view of Lee was to somehow more stay in the group, in the space as a group action, which is more rich than the group mm -hmm. itself. And I think historically, it was a bit forgotten this point of view of Lee because people like after, after, mm -hmm. after Carton in the, in the 50s, like people like Erzman, Claude Chevalet, etc. They tried to say that to, 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 to abstractize 
Lee groups. And I think it's, it's a loss of information, especially for equivalence methods. And also, so this method, uh, expansion method, is uh, in some sense uh, useful for, for uh, general any geometric structure. Or... I think so. Not, not all, but my, my, my intuition. Uh -huh. that, so uh, what is uh, so, so the so for many starting point, starting assumption to to, to be uh, employed uh, analytic analytic I need oh. analytic yes I need analytic but if it is homogeneous it is a, it is analytic by by Gleason and Montgomery so it's not mm -hmm. a real assumption so mm -hmm. but if it is not uh, homogeneous it is a real assumption yes I know. But as, as you say, it, it can, I think it could apply to many, I, I did not try to, to explore many different structures because I'm like busy with some structures currently. Mm -hmm. But of course, as, as Michael showed, mm -hmm. it, it is applicable to distributions mm -hmm. of, uh, of okay. K planes in, uh, in manifolds. It, mm -hmm. it, it is doable. Mm -hmm. I, uh, and as I know from all those papers, in all those papers, he always said, that this PD system or these parasitic structures, as we call with uh, Denny Hill and, uh, and Pavel Nurovsky, and this, everything can like come up with some sub manifold of a jet space as mm -hmm. like the starting point for many, many equivalence problems. I do not say all, but many. But do you also use uh, many uh, much computation? Uh, or computation, uh, may prove or something computation. I do, I, I never compute by hand anymore because I computed by hand like crazy during 20 years of my life mm -hmm. with like huge piles of manuscript like, like Pavel. We were good friends because we are crazy computers. Mm -hmm. But by hand, like crazy, like like hundreds and hundreds but of people. You say, you say, <laughs> but now, you but say. now, now <laughs> I go to Maple because I, I manipulate better Maples than my hand now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so to obtain some result uh, now, you, you need some computation for yeah, yeah. the computer, MIPUS. Uh, yes, I somehow need it now. It's like a drug. It's a drug for me. Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I need it uh, every day. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> are, there any, are there other questions for Joel? Uh, Joel, one, one more uh, question, not long. Uh, so, at what place you said that uh, you proved uh, convergence, uh, that, uh, something called the analytic category, but it is, uh, as far as I understand, it is not a direct application of Kashi Kavalevsky theorem. No, no, it's not a direct one. You're true. It's it just an argument, another proof of Kashi Kavalevsky theorem, but I uh, suspect that it is a big word, yeah? Yeah, it's a bit walk, you're true, yeah, of course. I see, okay. Um... Okay, thank you very much, maybe, so I should go. Maybe I could, uh, oh, you have to leave? Ah, you have a question, go, go. Yeah, yeah, sure, oh, well, a few, a few, few comments, I guess. Um, so one was, I mean, you emphasize a lot this, this branching, which is, I, I agree, is, is, is very important. Um, for the ILC setting um, in, in higher dimensions, uh, sorry, in the dimensions that we, we, uh, mm -hmm. we consider, so five dimensions. Uh, so, I mean, the branching tree wasn't written into the paper, but I mean, as the, if you look in the maple file, so that's that's exactly ah, how, ah, yeah, so look, look, in, look in the maple file, it's, it's all there. I mean, that's, that's how, I was, that's what we were able to assert completeness of the list. So, uh, so, so just have a look at that. Of course, we didn't go uh, dimension five, right? Because not that you can't do it, it's just that the branching becomes a lot more and our, our intention was to, to look at the, only the multiply transitive cases. But in principle, you could pursue yeah. this is the, also what's, in, like what's in the maple file it. even further. Right, yeah. and resolve those those branches below. Um, second comment was was concerning the this discrete thing, and maybe I didn't understand, but I'll just give you uh, what I know uh, concretely. For so so, I mean, when you create this Cartan bundle, you have a structure group there, uh -huh. and you're not just working infinitesimally, right? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. so in the end, I mean, for example, with these two three fives, uh, for example, in the type D cases, I mean, we there is a one parameter family. But you are also able to access the uh, residual discrete equivalences based on whatever residual uh, structure group is left over. So, so, so it, it, it's not completely ignored 
through the through the cartel method. Uh, no, from no, my no, point okay, of. okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, I know that you completely classify up to discrete group in your paper. This I know, yes. Well, because it's a manifestation of whatever residual structure group you have left after you've normalized curvature and you're, you're exploring one branch and then uh, or normalize the embedding. There's 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 still you're working at the group level. Uh, albeit the, it's the it's the um, it's a reduction of the structure group of the model there. Okay, uh, so yeah. so uh, and concerning the the yeah, action, yeah, yeah. Right? it's it's not an action on on the original space, but it's an action on the space of curvatures. Okay, Absolutely. or in your language, yeah, 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 yeah or in your language, it's 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 an action on the space of I guess transversals, right? To uh, yeah, or normalizations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's just a couple of comments. That I have. Um, are there any other questions for Joel? Okay, if not, thanks very much. And, Thank you very uh, much. Thanks, so, Joel. Bye -bye.